In this video, I'm going to walk through the reverb effect in Zebra 2 and just go through the different parameters. And I have the initialized patch here. And let me go ahead and zoom in. And that way you'll be able to hear and see what effect the reverb is having on the waveform itself and then also the spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to bring this, actually I think, I'm going to go ahead and add a reverb one. And just out of the box with the default settings, this is what it sounds like. Okay, so let's look at what's happening with this reverb. So first parameter is dry, and then we have a wet. And this controls both the dry amount, the dry signal would be without reverb. So let me just play that. And then if I turn dry all the way down and bring wet all the way up, then all we are hearing is the reverb effect itself. If we bring dry up and then have wet. Okay, so now let's check out pre-delay. So with pre-delay, what that does is it causes a delay to occur before the reverb effect is heard. So if I bring dry about halfway down, I bring pre-delay all the way up. You can hear the dry version first, and then the reverb comes in after that. And that pre-delay is determining how long it takes for that reverb effect to occur. So I will start to decrease this. and now they both occur simultaneously. Pre-delay can be useful when you're trying to allow the main sound to be more focused before that reverb effect comes in. For example, on lead sounds, that type of thing. All right, so range and feedback both work together, and range is basically the time it takes before the reverb reflections are heard. And feedback controls the level that's fed back into the reverb unit. So that will, in effect, cause a high feedback value will cause a long reverb tail. A low feedback value will cause a short reverb tail. So let me demonstrate that. I will start with feedback at zero. So you hear the dry followed by the reverb and the reverb doesn't last very long. So let me increase feedback. So we can have a very long reverb tail if we want. And in fact, if we had it all the way to max, it would basically continue a very long time. Okay, let's listen to what range does. In effect, the lower the range value, and you have to be careful when range is at zero, in fact, I'm going to leave it off zero because you can get some feedback occurring actually fairly rapidly based on the range setting and feedback. In fact, if range is at zero and feedback is at zero, you can actually get some feedback occurring with the signal and that would be not desirable. 
I'll turn the level down here. That way we won't kill our ears. So you saw that happening there with maximum feedback and zero range. We're actually getting some some feedback occurring in the signal and it's it, it won't stop. So in order to avoid that, just keep range above zero and don't have feedback all the way up. Now let's look at what range actually does. So I'll leave feedback there and range controls how long it takes for the reflection to occur. So it's the timing of the reverb in terms of its internal algorithm. And with a smaller range value, in effect, we have a smaller room size because the reflections are going to occur sooner. So the delay will be shorter between the time that the dry signal enters the reverb and the wet, and then the reverb reflections occur. So let me demonstrate that. It has sort of a metallic character. And then I'll increase the range. Okay, so you get an idea. And then dampening is basically a low-pass filter on the reverb, and it will allow us to simulate spaces that have sort of high-frequency absorption materials within them and, in effect, dampen the high-frequency output of the reverb. So to demonstrate damp, let me move this over a little bit. In fact, what I'll do is I'll bring this down, move it over here, and for this what I'll do is I'll bring dry all the way down to zero. And so watch what happens to the high end in the reverb, and I'm just going to hold the key down this time. So it removes a lot of the high end and basically warms up the reverb. So I'll bring dry back up. Okay, now speed and modulation. There are LFOs that are modulating range and feedback. This is internal to the reverb unit and you can control the rate at which those LFOs modulate the range and feedback using speed and modulation. Speed controls the rate and modulation controls the amplitude of the LFO. So let's see if we can hear this. Okay, the next thing to talk about is the lower row here, which is the diffuser. And this, in effect, adds more reflections to the reverb. And so the central control here 
D mix stands for diffuser mix and I'm gonna bring that all the way down actually I'll leave it up and then I'll play the reverb and that affects the overall density of the reverb So if I bring the mix all the way up and then just point out that D speed and D mod, those are the same, just like speed and modulation. These control the speed and modulation of the LFOs that are driving the diffuser range and the diffuser feedback. And so again, these control delay of the diffuser reflections. And then the feedback is the amount of feedback that's going back into the reverb. Bring range about halfway down and then let's bring these back to their default values and then we'll just look at the diffuser settings see if we can discern what effect those are having in fact I'm going to increase the reverb feedback and now I will increase the wet amount And now I'm going to increase the D range. And again, this is just adding another set of reflections to the reverb, which is helping thicken up that reverb. And it's really just a matter of fine-tuning it to your particular needs. So that's the basics for the reverb effect. And then finally, the last thing to look at is this. There is another mode here. There's metal verb. So you can experiment with that a little bit. has more metallic sound to it. It's interesting. But yeah, just experiment with that. Parameters are all the same, and you'll get a feel for how that sounds. I'll see you in the next video.